Hello, thank you for clicking on today's video. I hope you've been following along. This is part three of this mini series for an ANOVA. If you haven't seen the first two parts of our FRED uh, method for doing the ANOVA, I recommend you go back and watch the F for FRED and the R for FRED, because today we're on that E for FRED. Now remember in executing calculations, when you're doing a hypothesis test, the first thing that you do is to calculate the test statistic. Well, that's fairly involved, as you can see here with this formula. And so normally we allow our um, computing packages to calculate this test statistic for us. A couple things that I want to note. You can see that the test statistic has the notation F. So for an ANOVA, we have an F test statistic. Remember that test statistic is actually a generic term. And here we have specifically an F for the ANOVA. The other thing that you will notice because of the way that this calculation works, the uh, F test statistic actually can never be negative. And so just like we saw back when we did the chi-squared, this has a right skewed distribution. And with the chi-squared as well as this F distribution, it has that right skew. So it starts at zero, has a right skew because it can never be negative. And also that distribution depends on degrees of freedom. The only odd thing here with the ANOVA is that the F distribution has two different degrees of freedom calculations, and you can see the formula for those degree of freedom calculations shown right here. So when you do the ANOVA, you'll have an F test statistic, you have two degrees of freedom that are calculated this way, and then ultimately, just like we had the last time with the um, chi-square distribution, it's going to look like this, and the more extreme area is the area in the tails. So when we use the um, table or a calculator or a online program to find the p-value for our F test statistic, it's finding the area in the more extreme or to the right of the F. And just like before, when we said um, if you have a small p-value, and this is always the same, you are going to reject the null. Same logic that we discussed with um, the chi-squared that is indicating that you're in the tails or that the f is far away from zero, showing that there's evidence for your alternative. And if the p-value is not small, remember that we always make the decision fail to reject. <coughs> HO. And that would mean you had an F that was further in and you just had a larger P value. So that's executing calculations for the F as our test statistic. And then we have degrees of freedom that are two degrees of freedom actually. And then this is how you find the P value and ultimately the decisions you make, which is review from a previous hypothesis test. So in the next video, we'll talk about how to draw conclusions. See you there.